for singing um, as a church. All are welcome in this place for all of our lesbian, gay, transgender, queer brothers and sisters, all are welcome in this place. And my then fiance, you know, turns to me. He says, I, I thought that Catholics hated gays. And I said, where did you get that idea? And he says, everywhere. How can we construct, with God's help, a vision for the LGBT person within the whole story of Christianity? I once heard a priest tell me there was once this man that had a different way of loving, a different way of living, and that person was crucified because of the love that he preached that was not the love that other people expected him to have. And I can't he help but hear Christ's story that way and connect it to the story of a gay person. I think God wishes we knew that love was and is never meant to be limited. I think God wishes we knew that um, we aren't God. I think God just wishes we knew how much he loves us. The first principle is each one of us is created in God's image and likeness. And the uniqueness of the person uh, must be respected. For me, that's the first principle. Some of the first people that I told when I came out were fellow Marianists. And that was a very grace-filled moment when, when you have your own brothers are able to say, yes, David, we, we support you and we love you for being, being who you are. My reaction as a Catholic to Dominic coming out and then Margaret, early on I told uh, one of our good friends, and, and a, uh, a lay Marianist woman, uh, Dominic came out to us as gay and, and she, her response was, how wonderful. My experience of coming to know myself as part of the LGBTQ plus community um, has been an experience of coming to know God extremely intimately. I'm here because of my son. My youngest child is transgender. I always think about all the women that came before me. I think about the Latinos, Latinas, and the same too. So I think about what I go through. And so why wouldn't I want to help my LGBTQ brothers and sisters as well? I was hindered from being in full relationship with anyone or anything before I came out because I was working so hard to push down this really important part of who I am. We too have a place at the Eucharistic Banquet like anyone else. We too uh, are baptized like anyone else within the church. We too have a universal call to holiness. Um, and so that's my, that's where I see I am right now in terms of living out my identity as an LGBT individual within the church, within the Marianist family is, is really helping to be proud of who I am and share that, uh, not in a boastful way, but in a way that is speaking truth to power. The second principle, also important, especially from our Marianist uh, point of view, is inclusion. Shamanad's vision of that, uh, in terms of the various sodalities and lay communities that he founded uh, and worked with in, in re-Christianizing France, was also very inclusive, um, from different socioeconomic classes to different genders. I think changing with the sign of the times is such a unique part of the Marianist charism specifically. I don't know anything else like that where we're explicitly like, the world's going to change, we have to change with it. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have joined the order if I didn't believe in the welcoming and hospitable spirit, and if I didn't believe that it was a progressive and engaging and welcoming order. So within the Marianist, uh, Social justice, justice Collaborative, we have a number of teams, racism, immigration, uh, the death penalty, and so forth. The LGBT initiative team is a specific team that is working towards fully welcoming LGBT members of the Catholic Church into the Marianist family. The LGBT team are just rock stars, so they do a lot of really powerful programming um, that really invites people to be who they are and to be who they are in front of God. The um, Marianist uh, LGBT initiative team has published an educational resource in a way that preserves the dignity of the student first. 
our goal as Catholic educators is to educate the whole person. And if we are um, not ministering to those people that are struggling with their sexuality or struggling to fit in, then we're not um, ministering to the whole person. The third principle, and this is an important one as well, we have a history, we have a tradition that has to be respected. At the same time, that tradition has to be in dialogue with what modern biology, sociology, and anthropology are telling us about humanity. We don't know all the answers, and that's maybe a first step to dialogue. I think the church's call for us to live healthy and whole lives means that that's in relationship somewhere. That means that we feel loved by someone. But you can be a beautiful bird, but you can't fly, right? You can't express that love. You're just re rejecting someone's soul and telling them that you don't want them to be a participant in your community. It's just, it's ridiculous. You know, when I was growing up, I didn't understand what was going on with me. Mary, uh, now I see her as uh, the role model of, of not uh, her not understanding what was happening to her. And I realized that, that, that she didn't, you know, keep it a secret. So I think that's an important lesson that LGBT people bring to the church, what it means to come out. And it makes me think about that room, uh, the upper room where all the apostles were at Pentecost. You know, that in a way was a, a closet, a closet in which people were locked in there by their grief, their shame. But in that place, in that shared vulnerability where everyone was sharing their grief, their wounds, the risen Christ entered and said, look, here I am too, with my wounds. And if you touch them, um, you will experience the resurrected life. And in, in many ways, that's what we have to do too. We, we reveal to one another our woundedness, and in that, we come to see the resurrection. That's where I think where I find God is in the liminal spaces where there's powerlessness. That's to me where, where love is. Because I think with Pope Francis, he, he hasn't changed church teaching at all, but what he's done that's very important is change change the tone. The overarching concern, and perhaps the starting point, is the experience of people. We have to start in dialogue with them. In other words, we have to listen. Not just formulate theories and, and conclusions, but we have to listen to their experience. I think our relationship is God showing each one of us how much He loves us. Um, I, I strive to be a more loving, compassionate person because I want Him to feel that way. And I feel like I see and, and receive God's love through the way He loves me. So, yeah, I think it's that. Wow. <clears throat> <laughs> I mean, without this relationship, I wouldn't know how great love is. It's been incredibly powerful or um, heartening to see both my mom and my dad struggle with their faith in such an explicit way, both because it gives me an example of how I can live out that struggle, but also because it makes me feel loved to see you fight for my place and my space in the church. If we look at our understanding of the kingdom of God, we have to be inclusive because that is the vision that God has for this world. If I could change him to be heterosexual right now, I wouldn't do it because he would be <laughs> Right. He wouldn't be the man that he is if he were heterosexual, and I love him just the way he is. All of God's people, he intends as a gift to us. And when we can see them as a gift, we see the way God sees them. The church I dream of is probably the church that Jesus dreamt of. So 
At the end of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus prayed for the church to be one. Now, when we think about oneness, it's not uniformity, it's a diversity. So to me, you know, Jesus' prayer that the church be one is also in this holistic, healed you know, world of fullness and peace and justice. I think a universal church looks like a home, a place where I walk through these doors or I am with these people and I am at home.